<laughs> Today's drama, The Giant of Madras. At 9.15 of a stormy spring evening, Lamont and Margot were sitting in the lounge car of a deluxe transcontinental train. Lamont, can you imagine what these vast planes were like a hundred years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, vast. Oh. Now, but think of all the troubles the people in those days had. And the adventures. Boarding streams, fighting Indians, herds of buffalo. Mm, quite a life. And today you just get in a train and whisk across them, safe as a bug in a rug. Oh, I think a bug was equally as safe in a covered wagon. Oh. There's been quite an improvement as far as human beings are concerned. But you really prefer all this civilization? Hmm, it's restful. But just a little dull, don't you think? <laughs> Perhaps. But I wouldn't be able to think at all with a Sue's tomahawk buried in my skull. No, I guess that would be a disadvantage. <laughs> Maybe I'm just sleepy. Oh, it reminds me so am I. Oh, conductor... Yes, sir. Do you have the porter make up our berths, please? Lower 10 and lower 11 in car 15. Certainly, sir. And uh, when do you want to be called? Let's see. We'll be coming into our station at 155. Uh, better call us at 130. Hey, well, sir, I'll tell the porter. Oh, better call us at 1. I'll need time to get ready. Oh, of course. All right, conductor, call us at 1. <laughs> Time and the miles slipped by. And it was a little after 12 when... The train blew for a water stop three miles ahead. Now, this was usually a very deserted locality, this water stop. However, tonight it wasn't so deserted. In fact, if you counted the men, there were a half dozen of them. It's her. On time. Everybody know what they're supposed to do? Hickey? Yeah. Spider? Yeah. Radner? Sure. Cardi? Yeah. Jackson? Yeah. Okay. No slips now, no knives. Uniform set. Conductors, firemen, porters. Uniforms all set together. Okay. You all know the man you're going to pick when you get aboard. Find him, take care of him, and start looking. It's going to be a little tough finding it, Gamlin. Yeah. How are we going to locate it? He won't be wearing it on his forehead. Once we take over, that'll work itself out. Here she comes. Right on the button. Anybody getting yelled at, it's a time to back out. All right. Keep your finger on your trigger and your safety catch off. Nobody sells anyone else short. We're a cinch for a million bucks. You hear me? A million bucks. We hear you, Gannon. Okay, then. Move in. After ten? After ten? Oh, of course not. Your watch is stopped. Huh? Oh, yeah, so it has. It looks awfully much like it's getting to be morning. Morning? That's impossible. I told the conductor to tell the porter to wake us at 1 a.m. It's impossible that he forgot to tell the porter. Oh, ye gods, I hope not. He could have, and we could already be hundreds of miles past our station. Wait a minute, I'll ring for the conductor. Won't help you much. Why not? He doesn't come. I've been ringing for the last half hour. Well, he's probably snoozing in the lounge car. I'll go see Nobody in here, apparently. Appearances are often deceiving, my young Zen. I didn't see you sitting there in the shadows. There are times in life when the value of inconspicuousness cannot be overrated. Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I'm looking for the conductor. Of course you are. Several passengers have passed through here in search of that same gentleman in blue. Have you seen him? Not the sign of him. 
The fact is, my young friend, I fear we are all in for a bit of a blow. Yes? Yes. Tell me, are you an honest man? Well, I, uh... I filched a brace of candy bars on my ninth birthday. And since that depredation? Spotless record. <laughs> Most interesting. Uh, what's even more interesting is the whereabouts of that conductor. He was supposed to wake us at one o'clock. Then I fear he has failed you utterly. Oh, what do you mean? The night has grown much older than one o'clock. Well, my watch has stopped. Uh... On the other hand, mine has not. There. It has chimed the quarter of the hour. Oh, let's see. Quarter of... Oh, no. But, yes. Why, it's incredible. Not incredible, my young friend. Human events proceed with irresistible logic. Some steal while others pray. So runs the world away. But a quarter of five. We must be halfway across the continent. Better than half. Oh, where is the conductor? Where is he? Uh, that is what many would like to know. Well, I'll find out. The best of luck, my young friend. Conductor! Conductor! Who's that? You wake everybody up, sir. Uh, you were calling me? Yes, where'd you turn up from? Oh, I just come through the lounge car right behind you, sir. Uh... What can I do for you? My name is Lamont Cranston. Are you the man I told to call us at 1 o'clock? Uh, no, but I relieved that fellow a little after midnight. And he didn't tell you about our call? Uh, sure, sure. I, I was going to call you, sir. When? When we got to Malibu Beach? No. 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock? Yeah, I got 15 minutes yet. It's only 12.45. Look, friend, it's getting to be morning. Oh, you mean because of the way the sky looks? That's not morning, Mr. Cranston. That's light from some industrial plants just over the horizon. Look, it happens I know what time it is. The bald-headed gentleman with the monocle sitting in the lounge car showed me his watch. It's quarter of five. What's that about a bald-headed gentleman in the lounge car? He's sitting in the shadows by the bar. Didn't you see him? It's funny. Uh, no, I didn't. Well, you must not have looked. He's there. I'm used to keeping my eyes open, Mr. Cranston. If you ask me, that lounge car is empty. I just talked to the gentleman. Are you by any chance suggesting I'm out of my mind? One of us is. Shall we go see which, Mr. Cranston? All right, here we are. Where'd you say he was sitting? Right here, beside the... I told you there was nobody here. Well, he was here. He probably left the car at the other end. The passenger couldn't leave this car at the other end. As next ahead is a baggage car, and that door ain't left open. Now, if I was you, I'd get myself a little more sleep, Mr. Cranston. Pardon me, miss. Mark, what's going on? He was here, sitting right here. Where could he have gone? What are you talking about? I just had a somewhat peculiar experience, Margaret. There was a little man sitting here not ten minutes ago. He showed me his watch. Mm -hmm. I remember it rang the quarter of the hour. It's one of those old-fashioned ones that chime. So? Well, now he's disappeared. Well, before we go any further with the fairy story, did you find out what time it is? The conductor says it's not one o'clock here, but by the stranger's watch, it would now be just about five o'clock. And... Listen. What's that? It's him. That's his watch chiming. Well, where is he? Under the seat? No, he isn't. His watch is. Look, this is it. This is the watch he showed me. The crystal's all smashed. The hour hand's broken off. It must have fallen. Well, like somebody gave it the business with a sledgehammer. Yusef? Yusef? Yusef, are you here? Oh, I beg your pardon, young people. I am looking for my husband. Have you seen him, perhaps? Probably. A small gentleman with no hair wearing a monocle? Yes. What have you done with him? Now, wait a minute. The question is, what has he done to me? What do you mean? Well, he vanished practically in front of my eyes. Thank you. Yes, he was sitting right here by the bar. I stepped outside for a few minutes. When I came... What's that? Yusef. It's coming from inside this liquor closet. It is him. It is him. Wait a minute, give me room. Uh, Are you all right in there? This door is stuck. There. Alan. Alan, my wife. Oh, he's hurt. Yusef. Who did this? Uh, the giant. Giant of mothers. What happened to it? I... Uh, uh, this young man here... He took it? No, no. No, my my young friend did not take it. He did not take it. He, he only... Yusef, quickly, falling. What? 
You said... You said, speak to me. The diamond, you said. Speak to me. Spoken about as much as could be expected. Considering the fact there's a knife between his shoulder blades. Death. Oh, Lamont. He would not want us to mourn him. It is the giant we must think of. The giant of Madras. There's a giant in this, too? Not giant man. Giant jewel. Diamond, pure white. Flat circular cut. 25 carats. 25 carats? You said purchasing agent to his holy majesty, Mahatma Maharaja of Kutpur. And he has this diamond on him? Yes, on his person. Even I did not know how he was carrying it. Perhaps in his shoe. Perhaps a money belt. Perhaps... Perhaps in the back of his watch. Yes, perhaps. Let me see it. I'll take that watch. What? My friend, the conductor. The one o'clock scholar. Come on, he's got a gun. Let's have the timepiece, Cranston. Not trying to pretend it's yours. He ain't pretending nothing. I got a gun in this hand. I want that watch in the other. I'm sorry. We have a special use for this particular timepiece. Hand over the watch, Cranston, and hand it over fast, or you'll never know what time it is. Transcontinental train discovered the body of an East Indian gentleman locked in the lounge car liquor cabinet. The fabulous diamond called the Giant of Madras, which he was carrying with him, has disappeared. Cranston, the East Indian's wife, and Margot are about to examine the dead man's huge old fashioned watch for the diamond when. I'll take that watch, Cranston. Well, if it isn't my friend, the conductor. Come on, he's got a gun. Hand over the watch, Cranston. Hand it over fast, or you'll never know what you time it is. You have bad manners to turn your back on an old lady. Hmm? However, the old lady has a gun at your spine okay. and suggests you keep your back turned. What? Relieve him of the firearm, Mr. Cranston. Right. Now then, we will perhaps store him in the closet for safekeeping until we have a better idea of what is going on on this train, no? It's a good idea. Come on. Wait a minute. Step lively, Mr. Conductor. There's plenty of room inside. What's he doing? He did a signal. Maybe a friend aboard. For us, Dr. Good work, young friend. There we are. He certainly wanted Yusef's watch. Yes. She probably agreed with my deduction. The giant of Madras may be inside it. Very likely. Why don't we look and see? One moment. Well, he did not hear. Well, then where in the world can it be? I don't know. But whoever killed him wouldn't have left it in his pocket. Someone on train has the diamond. Come on, look. What? A station just passed by. What station? Galensville. And there's no Galensville. What kind of talk is that? I was looking at the rail map, reading myself to sleep. There is no Galensville on this route. Never a dull moment. Though I'd appreciate a few just now. Well, as far as I can... Listen... Someone knocking. It's from the car up ahead, the baggage car. What is wrong? The question I can soon answer... Stay behind with Alan, Margot. No, I'll do nothing of the kind. I'm going with you. But uh... don't argue. Okay, you win. We'll leave you in charge, Alan. Good luck. Go with you, young friend. Oh. Oh. Someone's locked in the baggage car. Well, if I can just snap this catch. There. Now, here goes. Stand away, sweetheart. The storm warnings are up. Who are you? You're not one of them. Are you? Are you? Look, Lamont, it's a conductor. You're passengers, aren't you? Now, what else could we be? Murderers, bandits, heaven only knows. What are you talking about? There are six of them. Led by some man they called Gamlin. They're after a 25 carat diamond. Where are they? Everywhere. They've taken over. They've stopped the train about midnight. Put me and the rest of the crew out of the way and are running the train themselves. That explains everything. No call, the murdered little man, the conductor with a gun in his hand. Yes, everything's as clear as a well-praised death warrant. What are we going to do? best we can do is to pray we reach Los Angeles alive. We're not at all sure even going there. What do you mean? We just past the station. It's not on the Los Angeles itinerary. What? What station? Galensville. Galensville, no. What's the matter? They've made a mistake. They've taken the North Spur at the junction. The Galensville route doesn't connect with the main tracks for another 50 miles. Oh, so what? There's a bridge on this route over Belvedere Canyon. The bridge collapsed at 11 o'clock last night. We just got the flash five minutes before they took the train over. Oh, no. And Belvedere Canyon is a drop of 2,000 feet. Oh, Lamont. Easy, darling. 
How far ahead is this bridge? It's only 20 miles from Galen, sir. Well, looks like we have to stop this train. We've got a fat chance. There are five armed men against us. Five? Sure. For a half a dozen to begin with, and one of them got knocked off in the scuffle. And I just locked one of our little playmates in the liquor closet in the lounge car. Where are they now, the remaining four? Probably up ahead in the engine. Well, Lamont, maybe we could talk to them, reason with them, explain to them that we're all going down together at the bottom of Belvedere Canyon. They're too slick to believe the truth. They think it was some kind of a gag. What do you suggest? Gosh, I don't know. But, uh, I think the easiest way would be if Gallen and his boys found what they were looking for. They got hold of the diamond. We could make a deal with them to stop in the stretch of pine woods just this side of Belvedere Bridge. But we don't know where the diamond is. Are you sure? What? Are you sure you don't know where the diamond is? Of course we are. Speak for yourself, darling. What do you mean? I mean, I'm not so sure we don't know where the diamond is. But... Is the door open going into the next car? Yes. Okay, see you later. Hey, what are you going to do? I'm going to try to make a deal with those boys in the locomotive. Stay here, Margo. Not in your life. Now, look. I'm going wherever you go. Okay. Coming along, mister? No, I'll risk it back here. I never developed a taste for hot lead. Just as you please. If we crash at Belvedere Bridge, you'll know the deal fell through. Come on, look. The door at the end of the car is open. You can see straight through the controls of the locomotive. Quick, get over into the shop. This must be the Gamlin boys. Funny. Huh? What is it? I only see three of them. Three will be plenty. I wonder. What? Remember the man we locked in the liquor closet? Yes. Remember that whistle? Yes. What about it? I think it might prove no end valuable in this particular emergency. Anyhow, it's worth a try. That's what I wanted to do. Maybe they'll come back to investigate. Candidate for a fractured jaw. Keep in the shadows. Mickey, Mickey, where are you? It's me, Radner. Hickey, Hickey, where are you? Hey, Hickey, why don't you answer me? What if it's not Hickey? <laughs> One less hoodlum to worry about. What happens now? A rebroadcast for our next playmate. The next feature is an interview with a gentleman named Spider who seems to be in charge of operations. Come on. Hello, Spider. Who is that? Radner. No. Eddie D. No. Then who is it? My name is Lamont Cranston. What is it? There's a bridge a few miles ahead over Belvedere Canyon, Spider. There are enough rails missing to let us drop 2,000 feet. I think you better start slowing down. What are you giving me? The truth. Put on those brakes. Look, mister, we're aboard to lay hands on a certain piece of merchandise. That's all we got in our minds just at the moment. That piece of merchandise wouldn't be the giant of Madras, would it? So you're wise. Suppose I was to tell you how to lay your hands on the merchandise in question, Spider. You mean you know where the diamond is? Could be. Slow down and we'll talk. Well, let's talk now, Mr. Cranston. Lamont, it's, it's our conductor from the baggage car. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, the Mr. Gannon we've been hearing so much about. Where's the diamond, Cranston? You'd better talk fast. There's not much time. I've changed my mind. I've forgotten where the diamond is. Lamont. The canyon is less than a quarter of a mile away, just around the bend. Maybe you'd better tell him, Lamont. No. It's not just our lives. There are 80 passengers aboard. The lady's right. Around in the car. In that stretch of pine woods he told us about. There's a tunnel straight ahead. Ready to talk, Cranston? I told you no. If you want me to stop, or try to tell me now, another 50 yards, you'll be too late to change your mind. Come on, Cranston, crack. No. The motor's the tunnel. Where's the giant of magic? Forget it. Okay, Spider. Let her go. <laughs> Well, 
I threw the tunnel. We didn't fall. The traps went out. You made that up to trick Lamont into telling you where the diamond was. I won't trick him anymore. I'll use a gun instead. Come on, Cranston West. Hey, where is he? He was standing right there. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Where's that coming from? Right here, beside the control. But there's nobody there. There's someone here, Gatlin. The shadow is here. Here to see that this little adventure ends in proper justice. Stop the train, Spider. Let's get out of this. Hey! I can't stop it! Something is holding my hand! I can't move! Stop it, dear! You can't, Gatlin. I'm holding him. This train goes down to the main line junction and the next police station. Yeah? That's the game two can play. Oh, Come here. Shadow, help! I'll try and spider loose of this thing goes over the side. This time it's no trick. I'll give you the count of three. One, two, three. Shadow! Oh, you at the controls. It's where you are. What is? What? What happened? I am sorry to have waited until the last minute. But I am an old woman. And I have never killed before in my whole life. Oh, don't apologize. I, I'll never be able to thank you enough. You do not have to thank me. You will help me find the giant of matter. You will not have to look for it, Ira. What? What voice is this? The giant of matter is not lost. Your husband was a good and quick judge of human nature. In the emergency, knowing that the train had been taken over by thieves with the express purpose of stealing the diamond, he entrusted it to Mr. Cranston's care by the simple expedient of dropping it into his pocket. Here is the jewel. Look. Look, the giant has not. It is coming towards me, suspended in the air. No one is holding it. Look. Yes, someone is holding it. I am holding it, Hara. I am returning it to you. You? Who are you? I am the Shadow. Darling. The scenery outside. Vast plains going by. Hmm? What about them? I was just thinking about the pioneers. What an easy time they really had. Hmm? No streamlined trains. No giants of Madras. No Mr. Ganlon. All they did was to travel around in comfortable covered wagons with nothing to be afraid of but wild buffaloes and Indians. <laughs> Yeah. Huh. 